everybody, go on to the next pelt off. Oof. And as you can see, I will tap it because I've got my hand and putty right now. Um, the paper mache has gone nice and rock hard now. So the next part is to basically sculpt this onto it, which I haven't done before. I'm probably going to go completely messy now that I'm doing it in front of a camera. So we can just basically just swapping it on like so. You're just doing this and you're making some kind of paste. And you're wanting to obviously form some kind of substance around the paper mache. And then this should harden eventually. And then we'll have a hoof. So I'll let you know once I've actually encased it in the stuff. And I'll get back to you. See you later, okay, guys. So I finished sculpting. And this is what I've got so far. Obviously it's looking a bit bumpy and stuff right now. But when it's dry you can actually shave and carve it. Um, I'll actually show you the bag because I've actually forgotten to show you which plaster I'm using. So it's just basically you add water to it and then two parts of the plaster, one part water, and then you slap it on. And this is the final finish that we've got. It's pretty heavy, which is what I'm wanting. Because basically that will help you to balance on your toes for the whole day. Um, I'm just going on <laughs> from stuff that I've heard from other people from tutorials. As I say, any tutorials I have found I will put in the bow at sad. Um, but what I have at the moment, that's, let's see how we go. And now I'm going to do the other shoe. <sighs> I'm going to put those to dry. I'm just going to show you which um, mould I'm using. It's a thing called Sculpt Mould, which is made by Amoco. I don't really know much about sculpting besides what I'm doing here. So um, this is basically what I'm using and it's been very easy to use. It's probably one of the simplest things I've used moulding wise um, and it just dries by itself you don't have to put in obviously a furnace or anything it just dries with air which is the best kind of sculpting you can get because then you don't really have to do anything it's quite dry, quick at drying it's gone quite squidgy at the moment it's kind of tetchy but it's still um, it's getting there pretty quickly um, I just got this for six pounds from a craft shop that is around here there were some that were a bit more pricey, but <laughs> unfortunately I'm working on a budget, as with many people that go to conventions are. Um, so I would definitely recommend to use this. Obviously I haven't started, um, I don't know, like carving or painting on it yet, but hopefully it should go alright. Um, at the moment this is looking pretty good. This is the shoe you just saw, and already it's hardening. Um, and they've got to go weight them. Obviously when they are dry as well, I want to <laughs> work on these spiky things here um, and probably put a bit of plaster on those just so you know they're not stabbing me at any point so yeah just put those to dry and then we'll go on to the carving process okay so here's the finished result with the shoe got a nice hard plaster here you can see I've you know <laughs> covered all those sharp spikes but you can always tell with plaster obviously it's hard when you tap it um, and you know you just go around all the way around here so you've got that nice poofy shape there so nice comfortable fit make sure you know the wire and stuff is still out the way so now I'm going to file it mm, great. all I'm doing here is filing down the shoe with some sandpaper and if there's any rigidy bits you're using I'll see a default file thing and that's just so you get somewhat of a smooth surface so you can have a nice heel but I'm leaving a bit of it rough just so it has a little bit of fuzz and a bit of it that's broke off but just be careful obviously and like don't hack the whole thing off so let's see how it goes towards the painting stages almost but let's carry on with the firing first <laughs> 